Hi everyone and welcome to the Picket Fan Studios YouTube channel. It's Erica with you today for my very first video and it's no surprise I'm using the gorgeous Estella Puppy stamp set because I am a bit of a crazy dog lady. It has some very sweet sympathy sentiments that will help your friends through those tough times when they lose their fur babies. This is a little piece of uh, Nina cardstock and I'm going to use my black hybrid ink and stamp this up with a mini misty and I'm going to do it twice to make sure I have a very good solid imprint. Uh, this was the only the second time I stamped this as stamp up and um, so I needed to do it twice to make sure I get a good imprint. Now this is going to be some Copic uh, coloring however I did forget I got my Copic markers out and I did forget to set it with a heat gun so I did that quickly and then I'm gonna go around the sort of shadowy bits and the outlines with an E59 Copic marker first of all. I will link all the or link I will mention all the Copic markers I've used for this coloring in the comment section down below and I will also link all the products to the Pickett Fan Studio shop in the comment box so you can pick up everything that you need from there. And um, you can see, uh, you know, this is very straightforward. I'm just going to go and fill in all the bits where there is natural shadows, as you can see from the stamp. So I'm really just going along here, filling these in and adding the, the E59. And then we're going to go in with the rest of the markers and just kind of move in while still we're not going to blend loose and loose here. We're going to keep quite a lot of texture for a furry look that's the best way I can describe it uh, now this is going to hop into a hyperlapse or time lapse very soon but the key to this kind of coloring here was to just kind of flick your marker and don't worry too much about the blending even when you're sort of halfway through and you think oh this is really not kind of looking very good because when I did add this E19 marker first I thought oh boy I made a mistake here this one is too red but I kept at it because I thought well this could be a learning a learning curve lesson so always stick with it until you are completely done because there's always ways you can save your coloring and please don't despair if you don't get good results right away because as with everything practice 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 will make perfect eventually so just stick with it and make sure you go back and look at your previous work because you will see that you've come so far. So yeah, really do stick with it. And right, so we're hopping in with our next color, an E17. And unfortunately I did miss this one, but I think it's an E15. And uh, then we are adding a little bit of E59 just for a little bit of highlight and uh, some E27 to just go back in and add, you know, a little bit more texture to that then. With some scissors, I'm just fussy cutting this out, uh, and um, because obviously I don't want the rest of the white on the card. And then, because I don't have a rainbow stencil, shock, gasp, horror, I decided I'm going to make my own. So with a sheet of acetate and a card base as sort of a, a guide of how big I wanted, I took this sheet of acetate and with what I thought was a permanent marker, turns out it's not, I drew this sort of bow shape of my rainbow on this. And then we are, I say we, but of course it's me. Uh, we are just gonna cut this out and we're gonna keep both pieces. So we have both the negative and the positive piece of the rainbow. Now, this is a memo to everyone who does this. Make sure you clean off any leftover marker on your acetate because it turns out, as I said, this is not permanent marker. So I did get a little bit of that marker mixed in with my colors. And if I'd started with a purple, that probably wouldn't have been such a big deal. However, of course, I started with a yellow. So that is today's lesson. And I'm going in with my life-changing blend brushes, which really have just made such a difference for my ink blending. And this is uh, another little tip as well. Use a little bit of either washi tape or like I'm doing here, I'm using post-it tape to hold your stencil in place. And I did realize here yeah, that this little piece of marker on the acetate sheet was doing me no favors. So we're trimming that off and then we're gonna go straight back in to the ink blending. 
Another little hack to get a really, really soft look as well is to first take your, uh, your brush and dip it into your ink and then dab off the excess onto your lid. So that way, when you need another soft look, you can just, instead of going deep into the ink pad, you just pick up a little bit of ink from your lid. It's a nice little save, even though it's probably like pennies of a penny that you're saving, but it still feels like a nice save. And right, so we are gonna then move uh, this little stencil up to cover up uh, the yellow. And uh, you might have noticed as well that I kept a little piece of kitchen towel just off to the side so I can clean off my stencil. Cause I thought, well, you know, I learned from my um, my previous mistake here. So I wanna make sure that there is no color contamination. So I'm also using a different brush for every color. And if you're looking at the card now, you can see that there is quite a gap between the yellow and the green. But I thought, well, uh, well, uh, we'll carry on and see how it goes. So I went to move on to use my third color, which is a peacock blue. This one is a lovely, lovely blue color from Ink on 3. And uh, again, I'm doing the dabby dab on the ink pad and then tap tap off the excess and going in with a very, very light hand to create sort of a pastel color. And that's one of the other things that I really love about the brushes is that depending on how much you add or not add, you can have so many color sort of shades of each color from one single ink pad. So even though these um, brushes, if you're gonna go for one per color, you are gonna have to make a little bit of an investment, but I promise you it is so worth it. So here with the negative bit of my handmade stencil, I am going to add in a little bit more yellow because I thought, well, that gap is starting to bother me now. So I'm gonna add the, I'm using both sides of the stencil, going in with a little bit more yellow to just kind of bridge the gap. And the other side of the stencil is keeping my green clear and free. And the first little bow bit is keeping my white space clear. So, I mean, this is kind of like a win-win situation, isn't it? And after a little bit of a cleanup, we are gonna move on to our next color. And here is, I don't know what number we're on now, maybe hack number three of the day, four maybe, is to maybe instead of using a card size stencil, use your entire sheet of acetate because I realized that the stencil was, oh, my homemade stencil, was not big enough to actually make a big bow. So use your entire sheet of acetate. And here we're gonna go in with a little a light touch of a purple. And then we're gonna just simply add a fifth color uh, of pink. And with that, the rainbow is done, but you can see I'm getting such a lovely soft look and the colors are kind of blending in towards each other. I'm such a fan of these brushes. I really cannot say enough good things about them. They have been a complete and utter game changer for me personally, because I never really got on with the old style, like foam pads um, with ink blending. I always got marks on my cardstock, no matter what cardstock I'm using. Uh, I was so frustrated because I really, really love, love, love the look. So when I tried the ink, the life-changing blender brushes, there is a reason they are called this, it was eye-opening and I could basically hear the angels sing. It, I have never ever since used my old style blending brushes or blending tools. Whilst on screen, I'm finishing off at this last color. I'm just gonna talk quickly about the card that inspired me to make this handmade stencil, homemade stencil. It's actually a card that you're gonna see at the end with the credits rolling. And uh, I did really like the coloring on that, but I stamped up the Stella puppy directly onto a card base and then colored her in and then tried to do the ink blending around that. So I used a mask on that a stencil over her and ink blended around. But I think I kind of like this one this way better because you have a little bit more control of where exactly your colors are gonna go and your final results. But now we're gonna quickly stamp up a few sentiments on this card and then we're gonna roll off onto the credits so you get to see the first card as well. Sadly, I forgot to film this part of the actual card making, but it is just a simple stamping up a sentiment with the hybrid black ink and we were done. On the first card, which is on the left, I stamped them up on this 
might cut stock and trim them down and add them to a few bits where the ink blending was a little bit overlapping. And with that, that's me done for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Well, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the Picketfeld Studio YouTube channel.